When we came to Hope College in Holland, Michigan 44 years ago, people in the community were still talking about the centennial celebration. I'm grateful to be able to celebrate the accessory centennial and been blessed with good health over long years so I can participate in this occasion. Some of us were seeking to, talking together about clarifying the mission of Hope College, but we soon found we had quite radically different uh, ideas and uh, not much was coming from these conversations. So I discussed this with Hugh Dupre, the chairman of the Board of Trustees, and he said to me, why don't you write the mission of Hope College in a single statement? The mission of Hope College is to offer, with recognized excellence, academic programs in the liberal arts in the setting of an undergraduate, residential, co-educational college, and in the context of the historic Christian faith. Academically, Hope is at the very top, I think, for colleges like ours. Undergraduate research program is extraordinary. Uh, opportunities in the arts, uh, faculty doing so many different things, both on campus and off campus. They involve students in their work in ways that are unlike most undergraduate institutions. For over 50 years, Hope students and faculty have worked collaboratively to do research that is published in highly rated journals and presented at top professional conferences. One person at another university once described Hope College to me as graduate school for undergraduates. Last phrase I added was in the context of the historic Christian faith. Now there were many people who thought this wasn't really possible, that a college could be, so to speak, good and Christian too. But I always thought that was a bit of a myth and that hope had the ability, given its heritage and its, its foundations, to be strong in both. Hope has been a place where students of any faith background or no faith at all have been welcome. The Christian faith has intellectual dimensions and spiritual dimensions and moral dimensions. We offer a winsome invitation where students can come, explore what the Christian faith has to offer, and by God's grace, encounter Jesus Christ in a life-changing way. These are the qualities which go into shaping a person's life. Hope does this package better than any place I know. My mind went immediately to uh, April 28, 1980, which was the day of the Venralti Fire. As an older building, it had wooden floors and partitions, but brick walls, and so the whole building functioned as a sort of a chimney. But uh, one, that event did trigger a lot of spirit of cooperation and uh, creativity on the part of faculty and staff. I recall having a basement, uh, an office in the basement of Durfee Hall in a corner far removed from the campus. We were in the process of closing 12th Street and with Van Rolte gone and 12th Street closed, you had a whole new day in, the, in, in, in a fine uh, campus. You recall that three different governmental units had to uh, approve a millage for an area center. And when that went down, one of the governmental units voted against it. That was kind of off the table. People came to me and said, well, since the governmental units couldn't do this, how about Hope? Building, building a facility like this. And I said, boy, you know, that, that would be a stretch. We'll give it one try. And I think that did propel us into thinking that most anything was possible. Shortly after I arrived at the college, I invited the Hope community to join together in a process of visualizing the future of the college. We worked together over an 18-month period faculty, staff, students, alumni, trustees, visualizing the next 10 years of Hope College. The result of that was the culmination of our work in May 2015 when the Board of Trustees unanimously adopted the new strategic plan, Hope for the World 2025. We all stood and applauded the work that had been done by the Hope family to create an inspiring and challenging vision for the next 10 years. A year and a half or so ago, when the new tennis courts had just been built, uh, 
I had, hadn't seen them, so I just drove over there one day all by myself. I began lo looking around, they're standing there looking around, and right next to me there was the Boobie uh, Baseball Stadium. And I looked a little further around, you have the, the uh, Eckdale Bice athletic fields, and then the Walters softball field. To see all this was beyond my f f faintest uh, uh, expectations. And I remember the verse of scripture about God doing above your, all you think or imagine. <laughs> I'm playing on an intramural softball team. It was created by a group of students and they call it All the President's Men. Well, how do you say no to that? I signed up, but what they didn't tell me is the games are played at like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Now, you know, it's easy for me to imagine that I'm still 19 years old when I get out there with those guys, but I think I've lost a step or two and they're just humoring me. This one day I received an email from a student and they said, we would like to invite you and Mrs. Boltman to go with us on our donut run next week. And I thought to myself, what is a donut run? I don't even know what that is. Well, what time do you go on the donut run? And they said, well, it's, it's, it's midnight we go on the donut run. And I thought, Jim Boltman, you are an absolute wimp. If the students want you and your wife to go on the donut run at midnight, you do it. And we walked about three blocks in zero degree weather and a lot of snow to the local donut shop. When we arrived, the, the place was dark, and I thought, oh, it's closed. And the students said, oh no, it's open all night for Hope students. And so they went to the door, we all went in, we sat down in the booths, and back in the kitchen, there was the person who was doing the cooking. He was dressed in a t-shirt and boxer shorts, I do remember that. <laughs> It was one of those uh, just joyful experiences that we'll never forget. Kelly and I fixed up an old room in the basement of the president's house, and students often come there to hang out, maybe to do homework or to gather for a Bible study or something. One night, fairly late, I was in my pajamas in the kitchen, and I heard a sound and looked around, and a student was emerging from the basement, rubbing her eyes and looking a little bewildered. She introduced herself and said that she had gone down to study in the afternoon and had fallen asleep. When I came to Hope in 1972, it had gone up to 22 straight losses to Calvin College. Gary Van Heest would ask me, of the chaplain would ask me to, each year to give a talk in the chapel uh, early in the semester. So I'd, uh, I'll talk on February 6th, my birthday, and I'll talk about the serendipities of 60. At the, but I closed that little chapel talk and saying, there's one other serendipity I'd like for my 60th birthday. That was to beat Calvin tonight. So that night uh, we beat Calvin and the 22 lost streak was over and we are on our way to a new era. This is a moment in time when really uh, Hope College has become such a remarkable place. You have exceptional academics in a vibrant Christian atmosphere where faculty and staff genuinely care for students. The commitment to excellence here is second to none, and this institution can take its place alongside the very best liberal arts colleges in America. It's my vision that this college will continue to grow in national and international stature as both a premier liberal arts college and a leader in Christ-centered higher education. In the context of a historic Christian faith where you believe that God's ultimately in control and, and uh, his good purposes uh, are what we're really eager to accomplish. Mm -hmm.